Здравствуйте. Hello, как дела? How are you? I am Prince Arkady Arkadyevich Bunin. Setting is my apartment, Berlin, 1926. Suppose you knew that there were 10 million pounds being held by English and Swedish banks for the children of the Russian Tsar, Nicholas II. Suppose you found a girl who had told the hospital nurse that she was the only surviving princess, and you had a chance to cash in on that fortune. What would you do? Would you be tempted as was I, a Berlin taxi driver, who was once a wealthy Russian prince? <laughs> it was such a girl, lost in the mists of amnesia, hoping to find her true identity, who fell into my hands and those of <laughs> my shady associates. We spread abroad a rumor that when the imperial family was massacred in Yekaterinburg in 1918, the youngest daughter, Anastasia, though severely wounded, escaped with her life. The confused, forlorn, and bitter amnesiac is not holding back our plans. Conspiracy prospers. Success is in sight. But the imperial grandmother, mother to Nicholas II, is still alive. Her acceptance is essential. Now, if we can have that, if we can win that, then the rich prize will be ours. And now, Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you Dowager Empress Maria Feodorovna, Her Imperial Majesty. Arkady Arkadyevich, I thought you were dead. Don't they shoot traitors nowadays? <laughs> Let Your Majesty be reassured. The tradition has been observed. I was sentenced to be shot twice. By whom? The white or the red? By both. And you are still here. But then I remember you were always a man when you came to a parting of the ways to both. It seems to me, Your Majesty, that our cause has had enough martyrs. But what it has chiefly lacked are men with practical minds who know how to gauge an opportunity and seize it when it occurs. As you are doing here, the effrontery of using the name of Romanov to create a business with shares and salaried officers and a promise of handsome dividends. I compliment you, Bunyin. You are a scoundrel on the grand scale. Either a scoundrel, Your Majesty, or quite possibly a loyal servitor to a princess long denied her rightful heritage. Yes, you have come some distance since the days when you were aide de camp to my other son. Gambling into the small hours with the Grand Dukes, earning 2,000 rubles a night, as I was told, with suspicious regularity. Oh, there is no need to cheat opponents who pour their brandy out into goblets. <laughs> I remember one of your mistresses from the Marinskaya Theater. You went in for actresses even then. She was French, if I remember rightly, with eyes like a letter of mourning. She created quite a scandal in your rooms, and my husband called you to account. <laughs> Alas, Your Majesty, the lady acted when off the stage and behaved when on it. <laughs> An unfortunate reversal. She uh, conveniently disappeared and you were free to tell whatever story you liked. In those days, you made women disappear, and now you make them appear. Quite a talented magician. The Grand Duchess, Anastasia, asked you to grant her an interview because you, better than anyone else living, can judge the truth of her claim 
She had come to us, as had you, with an open mind, we hoped. My dear Bonin, I have already seen two Tatianas, an Alexis, and a Marie, and I'm a little weary of these spectral monarchs. But I'm not here to spoil your little game, though I'm not here to help it either. I am here, if you must know, because my nephew has plagued me into it. I am grateful to his highness. But I wonder if you don't try my patience too far. I have lost everything I have ever loved. My husband, both my sons, my five grandchildren, my home, my position, my country. I have nothing left except my memories. Don't lay your hands on those. They are sacred. Now you may go. Thank you, Your Majesty. I see you hesitate. Perhaps you are afraid that your artist may not be able to perform without a prompter. Not at all. I will go and tell Her Highness you are ready to receive her. I think Your Majesty is about to meet with some surprises.